it's like, a, it's like the old coach talking to the old captain. What was, what was I like, mate, as a coach? Oh, I thought you were pretty good, man. Uh, but I did think you were better as an assistant coach. I think you were the best assistant coach ever of all time. I think the combination between you and Ando was honestly the most perfect combination there could be, bro. And what about that, that combination back in those days, mate? How good was it? Oh, it was good. Everything back in those days was good, mate. wasn't quite as hard as what they got now, but, um, you know, we had fun, bro. We were building, I think there were six balls out there. Uh, you were just freshly uh, off playing in the Super League, uh, so you were a good dude then. I don't know if you're that good now. Uh, and I was a good man, but, uh, you know, we were just playing and having fun with the dream of one day playing out there against the NRL. Plenty of local talent there, mate. Heaps of talent, Wilkes. You're, you're an old boy. I really applaud the club for getting our old boy. Back. Um, I think it's, it's awesome how they're building that culture back into the Warriors. What have you noticed about this upcoming year? Well, I, I noticed there's a lot that they're trying to change and it is slowly having it, making a difference. I think some of the boys they're bringing in, the coaching staff as well, but I think Andrew Webster is awesome. He reminds me a lot like, of Daniel Anderson early on in terms of so much care, his smarts in and around it, and he's got a little bit of you in there too, Kempe, some of the good parts. So um, I like him, he's only a young man, because all you guys were young back then, uh, and he's the guy that everyone relates to, and then just having everyone in and around the place, and, and what they're trying to do, man, it's, it's all about excellence, and they're not sticking, you know, not being happy with just status quo, bro, which was not good enough last year. So just tell the, you know, tell the listeners what, what it's like being an ambassador, what, what does that actually mean, like what do you and Arwen and why don't you, what's your role? Well, I think last year it was, was pretty loose, because it was the first year I wasn't doing a hell of a lot, to be honest. I was looking after me, but this year it's a little bit different. I, I come in and as ambassador, an extension of that, I do a bit of uh, sponsorship, I do a bit of welfare, so I'm actually doing 20 hours a week in the Warriors. Um, I was not. Uh, he's just getting paid to be that ambassador and look good, uh, and then Campo comes over where he can. Uh, but why don't he's done a really good job? He's a cultural ambassador, which is huge. Um, unfortunately, he can't be here tonight, but um, he makes sure that it's not a token gesture. He makes sure that it's real and that everyone understands the power of Tikanga Māori and everything. So uh, it's good having the old boys around, man. Well, no, I want to talk to you about the hooking role. You know, yep. like you never, you weren't a natural hooker. No, absolutely. But you were converted to that hooking role. Done such a fantastic game. Played for New Zealand on that number nine jersey. The nine jersey for me at the Warriors is a really hard position to fall. Are we going to be better in that position this year? We've definitely got Wade Egan in there. At the moment, the way he plays, he plays 80 minutes. It's pretty hard to get him out of there. Um, and, you know, when you actually see what he does in the training paddock in and around the club, then you really have a more of an appreciation for why he's the guy and he plays so long and how important he is, 80 minutes. But I think if you look at all the other good teams around the competition, they do have two hookers. They've got one hooker coming on, so they, they, they share that role. And they're equally as adept out of their running. They're equally as dangerous out of them half the speed, everything else. So that's something we have to fill, and we're going to try and fill that. So in terms of what we've got, uh, we've got some good young halves coming through, uh, but in terms of hookers, you know, I think there's Etu who's uh, down there in the um, uh, juicy flag, who's very exciting, uh, but he's got a bit of time yet ahead. Yeah, it does take a, a, lot, uh, a lot of time to develop. Mate, just tell, tell me, how hard is it to keep your, your, your trap shut when you want to go out there and sort of give them a tune-up or even a snap around the ears? No, no, look, I've, I've already got up and, and said something uh, from what of you because one of our themes is that you've got to be open to honest feedback. And I got up and I said to the boys, uh, do you mind if I give you some open, honest feedback and comes from a great place? And then I let it rip. Uh, and, and well, in a nice way, in a constructive way, after I sat down and did a few notes, it was very well received. And that's part of it. You, know, you can give honest feedback all you want, but it's about you taking it on board and what you do with that. Uh, so there's some good young men at the club and uh, some good uh, leadership there. So I just feel privileged to be a part of it and the fact that they do listen and they do want to take it on board and they do want to get better, man. Mate, you played with some really good players. He's rattled off a couple. Campo, Ali, Sione, Francis Malley, Clinton Torpy. Now, when you look at this side, who excites you in this side to look look forward to in 2023? Well, I think there's a bit more depth in the halves. I love the fact that Tamari Martin's come in. The way that he's throwing his shoulder around and against the Tigers, he's very smooth, he's nice and relaxed and composed. I think he's going to be a nice ball for Sean Johnson, but even, um, obviously, Luke Metcalf. It's a shame that he got injured, mate. The pace that he showed, um, what he is doing in and around Charlie, Ronald Volkman's good too. Uh, but I like 
like the big men. I like the men in the middle, bro. And uh, Mitch Barnett, he's going to come bring that hard-nosed approach. I think he could be somewhere between a Kevin Campy and Michael Luck because the engine on him is huge, man. He is up there at the front and he's just going hard and he's got that mongrel in him. I wanted to use a different word, but I better not say that. He's got that mongrel in him and I think that's what we need in the middle of the park, man. Hey, thanks for joining us on SCNC. Anytime, man. SCNC.